Well, on the Cedric Maxwell podcast, have to have have Enos with us today and uh, Enos Cantor. And um, Enos, how, how have you been doing? How are you feeling right now? I feel good. You know, I'm not going to lie. I gained seven to eight pounds. No lie. <laughs> Listen, the good thing is it was Ramadan, so I was fasting. So I didn't gain. I was expecting like to gain around like 15 pounds, but I only gained like seven, eight pounds. So it's not, it's not that bad. You know? well, I, I keep hearing you say that, but I saw something you on the other day, and they talked about, your cooking skills and how you become a better cooker <laughs> and omelets. Right, right. How the, you know, how'd that work out for you kind of being by yourself? I mean, I mean, listen, man, like I remember when I was a kid, right? My mom used to always tell me like, hey, son, learn how to cook. I'm not going to be there for you the rest of your life, right? So like, here I am like 20 whatever something years later. Uh, I mean, first I was always thinking like I'm not gonna need it because I'm always gonna order from outside but now with this pandemic it's even like so risky and dangerous to order food from outside so like I'm just I started cooking like the omelets and you know some sandwiches some kind of like toast whatever like the first I'm not gonna lie man like the first first couple of weeks I ended up eating cereal all the time because my cooking was terrible like terrible but now, like, you see, like, I'm, I'm cooking some, like, steaks, chicken wings, lamb chops. So, like, I'm getting better, man. Wow, that is unbelievable. Well, you know what? Let's talk about something that's really important to you, and that's your family. Because mm -hmm. I've heard that you, you said that repeatedly during the whole time, that anytime anybody talks to you, you always talk about your family. And now that the world's become one family, how is it? How, how is it? Well, you know, just tell me about family to you and what that means? Uh, family always comes first, man. You know, faith and family always comes first. I mean, if you uh, look at what's happened with my, my family, I mean, last time I saw my family, it was back in 2015, you know, just because of there is lots of issues going on. You got, like you guys know, in Turkey, um, I cannot even pick up my phone and communicate with my mom and dad. It's, it's tough because like year goes by, you know, there's Mother's Day, there's Father's Day, you know, everything, but like, all I can do right now, there is only a, like a one picture of my phone from my mom. And I'll look at it almost every day and say, hey, I'm, I'm fighting for something good. And of course, it will take, I mean, the, I, have, I, I got a lot of sacrifice in this. So like, it's, it's tough, but like, I'm sure they're proud. I mean, because of what I'm doing is I'm trying to fight for freedom, democracy, and human rights. So I'm sure they are proud. The thing that most Americans don't get is that we have all these personal freedoms yep. and yep. we just kind of take it for granted. We're yeah. protesting right now about going out and, you know, not having a mask on. Your mm -hmm. country is a dictatorship yeah. and you do yeah. as somebody tells you to do. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, man, like people should feel blessed to be in this situation in this country. You look at it, you got freedom, you got democracy. I mean, you got freedom of speech. I mean, like you hate the president or you love the president. You can say it out loud and nothing will happen to you. In Turkey, you retweet something against the government, you'll be in jail. Wow. You know, it's, it's wild. It's wild there. There's so many pol political prisoners, journalists, you know, and innocent people are in jail right now because of they don't think the same way what president thinks. But like it's just don't take it for granted. You know, I, when I turn on the news in, here in America, there's so much negative news out there. You know, this side is attacking this side. That side is attacking the other side. Republicans, Democrats, they're always fighting. But like, our main goal should be just one. And that should be like, how can we make this country better together? You know, sometimes we forget our main goal and say, hey, like, let's attack this, let's attack that. No, our main goal should be, how can we get through this together? I find that to be so refreshing in the fact that we are having this pandemic. Another thing you talked about was talking about your teammates, your teammates mm -hmm. being brothers, your family right now that are actually here. And you've right. been doing some Zoom conferences with them. Yeah. I've heard Danny Ainge has had some, you know, people coming in to speak mm -hmm. to you guys with Zoom conferences. Just a lot of information is getting out, but it seems like you guys are trying to stay together psychologically. Um, it's important, man, because like, when you play with those guys so much, they're not just your teammates, they're your family, they're your brothers, you know? And then obviously with this pandemic, you cannot just go out there and hang out with your teammates. You miss it though, you, can, you, can, you cannot do it for their, and for your safety and their safety. But 
you still want to build that team chemistry because what happens off the court is more important than what's happening on the court because it will translate to on the court stuff. So like we had this, we, we, we actually have chapels every Tuesday and we had this, you know, uh, Zoom conferences every Wednesday, actually today. They always invite one of like the motivational speaker, one of the celebrities. I remember uh, David Ortiz came, Paul Pierce came, Ken John came from Hangover, Mark Warburg came. So it's like, it's good and refreshing to, Terry Crews came, it's good to listen to those guys, their life story, their struggle, and you know, their inspiration. And just same time, just having that meeting with your teammates, seeing how they doing, uh, what they doing, if they're okay or not. It's good, man, because like, it's like your big family. The thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to slap at your game because you you do have the ability to knock down threes. We've seen that. Uh -huh. But <laughs> what I love about you is you pay you play old school basketball. Mm -hmm. The paint is your friend. You you I mean a lot of guys run away from the paint. You you embrace the paint. You embrace the contact. That part of the game is I think is missing that you seem to bring back to the Celtics now that they haven't had in years. You know, like now the Celtics uh, are just uh, broadcasting like the old games, you know, like I'm talking about the Larry Bird times, Kevin McHale times, your time. So like, I watch it and I'm like, man, I came in the wrong time. <laughs> I wish, I promise. I'm like, I wish I played in like back in those times. Cause like you see now, like you said, man, everybody just uh, shine and staying away from like getting away from the contact. And like, they don't, all they do is just pick and pop, shoot threes. But like, I, from my, you look at my career, like from day one till now, I love, you know, getting those offensive rebounds, back to basket, you know, just be tough, be physical. Cause like, it's, it's just my game, man. That, that's what like gets me going, you know? But uh, I guess NBA is changing a lot. I feel like what the Warriors did is just ruined the whole league. Now, <laughs> you, you, ask, you ask every little kid, they shoot threes. They don't care about fundamental. They don't care about post up footwork. They they want to shoot threes. They want to be like Steph Curry. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Yeah, we're going to blame this all on Steph Curry because, <laughs> as you said, you looked at everybody's game now, but you can tell to me, I always say, in the playoffs mm -hmm. is really when it gets back exactly. to kind of old school basketball because exactly. you're trying to bump and grind. The game slows yeah. down. You take away those threes, mm -hmm. and now post up becomes that much more important. Exactly. I mean, every detail, I mean, every position matters, you know, like, and now like you look at the, the, the setup they're trying to do, we're going to play against Philly, it looks like, you know, so like you got Embiid there, like you got to be like the big and tall and physical and try to box them out every position. So like, like you said, man, it, it can work like the, the pick and pop stuff and whatever. It can work like when, when it's not play or the regular season, but when it's playoff time, like you said, the game slows down. It's like a half court game, details, you know? So it's like, we'll see. It's going to be very uh, interesting. The thing that I remember saying about you when I first saw you play against the Celtics was, I used to hate you. And I yeah. say it in, in, a, in a respectful way. Yeah, yeah. The way people said about me, it's like, damn, how do you get those offensive rebounds? But what I know about you and great offensive rebounders, is that you move before the ball hits the rim. Yeah. You are looking at the Kim, you are looking at the the way the ball, the angles, mm -hmm. the geometry of the ball, where it's gonna hit, and you anticipate where you're trying to get to before the ball hits the rim. I mean a lot of people wait for a ball to hit the rim, then bounce and then they go get it. I feel like you gotta just get an early position. And the rebound offensive rebound is all about heart and hustle, you know? And like one thing about the offensive rebounds, man whenever I'm out there, I want to give my teammates confidence. And I always on the bench tell them, it's like, dude, like shoot it with confidence. If you miss it, I'm going to go get it for you. So just shoot it with confidence. I'm going to go get the offensive rebound even if you miss it. So like, they're like, okay, I got it. So like, the next time, like, they, they shoot it well. But like, it's important because it gives us a second chance. And, and it demoralizes the other team. Like, think about you play really good defense for yes. 23 seconds. And last, they took a shot the last second, and you have offensive rebound, kick it out, and you have another 24 seconds of play defense. Now it's like killing them. I, um, I, I, the one time that I think I might have got mad with you here, or envious of you here with the Celtics, is when you did knock down the three. 
and you looked over at the bench and did like this and you started yeah, getting I, <laughs> I said, I don't go. I said, look, I said, don't go to the dark side, dude. Don't yeah. go to the dark side. <laughs> now, you know, in playing this game with Brad Stevens and the kind of guys you're playing with mm-hmm. right now, what is – what do you see in the future so far as getting back to the playoffs? Or how do you think the playoffs are going to happen? Because everybody wants to know right now, are we right. going to Orlando? Are you going to Vegas? What, with your mind, what do you think we're going to do? I mean, when, when we had a, like, I was like, I think about 10 days, around 10 days, when we had a really good conversation with Adam Silver and MBPA, um, they were talking about like two locations, possibly Orlando or uh, Vegas too. But I heard there's so many other cities calling NBA and want to host NBA uh, players. I think Adam said that, that, that there was one point they were thinking about going to a different country. And I'm like, oh, my God, no. I heard they were, I heard they were talking about going to Turkey. Oh, my I'm God, yes. Joking. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm staying here and practicing. I'm good. I'm like, go. <laughs> but, uh, but then Adam said, like, it will be very tough for him to like, just move the whole league to a different country. But, uh, but right now, the, there's so many news out there that we have no idea what's going on. But I know one thing, that whichever, whatever NBA decided to do, player has to agree with it too. I remember like five days ago, NBPA was texting all of us, one by one, player by player, saying, do you want to play? That's it. Because like, think about it, man. Like, I'm a single guy. I have no one to worry about but just myself. But like, you look at Gordon Hayward. Three daughters, one on the way, are kind of coming. Um, you look at like Brad has a kid, Jason Tatum has a kid. Like there's so many people have like families and whatever. If you put all the players in a bubble, what the, the family's going to do? You cannot put them in a bubble for two months and say, okay, do not leave the hotel, you know? But the other side, like if you put the families in that bubble, then you put them their life on that, on the yeah. risk too. So like, yeah. Till they finally cure a vaccine, I think it's going to be tough, man. Like, like, and like NBA is forgetting about like if a player gets like sick and something happens, they can sue an NBA big time. Yeah, yeah. And so like there is like, there is so many folks out there, man. I have no idea. But Adam said all the team um, owners wants to compete and go out there and compete. You know, that's that's no question. But like, it's all going to come to an like how they're going to do it. Yeah, I, I, I see that. I even I heard one of the things that came out was Adam said, once you get this thing started, we're not going to stop again. So yep, if a too. player on your team got Corona, you might have to forfeit the series and be out. So, I mean, we're, but, we're talking but, about a whole nother dynamics, which is, seems exactly. to be absolutely crazy. Like, think about we are going to p- p- play against, like, say, Milwaukee Bucks, Eastern Conference Finals, and say – Giannis got the virus. Then, then what? It's an easy win. Or like some of our, some of our team members got the virus. Then what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's going to be very weird and different, man. I mean, I, I have no idea how they're going to do it. I guess that's why Adam gets the, the big chance. You know? <laughs> he's the one going to he's gonna, he's the one gonna decide. But like the one thing, man, because like NBA was the first league was suspended itself, right? So every other major league us take an example of what NBA is doing, what Adam Silver is doing, you know? So, like, they're playing a big role in this, man. I find that to be, like I said, this to me, you've been in the league for a while now. This has to be the strangest period of your time. And yeah. this year, yep. for the ex-commissioner to pass away, then yeah. to have All-Star again, then have Kobe Bryant pass yeah. away, then the league to stop. This league, this year has been, 2020 is crazy. Yeah, for sure, man. And I mean, like, you see what, like, what, what NBA, what, and China thing where it happened, you know, this year. So, like, NBA have been through a lot, man. But, uh, I mean, I have no idea how they're going to do it. Because, like, and I, I'm hearing, like, not from the Celtics, but there are some other team players out there that they don't want to play. Wow. They're like, they're like, it's just a game. I'm not going to risk my life. I'm not going to risk my family's life and put their life on the line to just go out there and play a game. I'm not playing. That's what the other team on Celtics, we all good. If, if it's all safe to go, we want to go out there and compete. But when we had that NBPA meeting, and they said it, they said, hey, there's other team play, players that they don't want to play. 
I think, it, you know, that to me is, even as a broadcaster for me, I'm trying to think like, well, if I was broadcasting a game, how do you think it would be if you were playing in the empty arena? How, right. how, would, how, would, that, how would that be? <laughs> I mean, because I, I could think, I remember you talked about, you know, when you were growing up, you played soccer for a while yeah. and all that, and you just played with your friends, and you guys were the only ones there. But now being in an empty arena with these superstar, megastar yeah. players, and yeah. you're just playing as your team against their team, that would seem weird. It's, are you a wrestling fan, WWE fan? Yeah, yes, yes. So, I like, I, I don't know if you watched the, the last WrestleMania. It was nobody but just the wrestlers was fighting out there. And it was, like, one of the most awkward the matches I've ever watched it. You know, all you hear is, like, the ring. All you hear is, like, the, the player, like, the, the, the wrestlers are screaming. It was awkward. But, like, if you ask any players right now, man, I feel like if it's all safe to go, we are all itching to go out there and play basketball. We'll, we will we'll literally take anything right now. I am watching it because I'm seeing how NASCAR has no fans. Yeah. Even the guy won. It's like he comes out and, you know, people know me cheering. He's the mm -hmm. only one. They got a microphone and they're six feet away. <laughs> the social distancing, and I understand what we have to do, but the weirdness of the year. Do you think there'll be an asterisk at all on the NBA champion if we're able to ground one this year? Uh, I mean, this will be like the – I mean, like, think about this. Like, we have not – like, some of the players haven't touched a basketball for, like, two, three months. So, I feel like this, will go, go, this is going to be, like, the most difficult and hardest championship that, that, that any team ever won, you know? Because, you, you like, know what? I said that. I said exactly. I said, yeah, we have players right now all their lives, like a Jason Tatum, has played basketball almost yeah. every day or maybe yeah. missed maybe two or three days, but – for him not to have a basketball for three months, that exactly. must be absolutely great. Now, it may, might make you love the game that much more since you exactly. have to you, you know what? You appreciate the game more. Now you like, man, not, not just the basketball, but, like, people saw how much we need sport in our life. Because, like, think about this. You had a very stressful day at work, right? What, what do you do? You come home, sit on your couch, get some junk food, and watch your favorite team to play. And that will just make the whole day just better. But now there is no sports. Or people are just going crazy right now, you know? So, like, I feel like we need sports in our life. We need basketball in our life. But like, like I said, man, because just because of people haven't done anything for, like, two, three months, like, they can be, like, big. You, I mean, you play basketball. You know this. Like, pe people can have, like, big-time injuries. I'm not talking about, like, ankle sprain, whatever. The injuries can, like, affect players' career and life. Yeah. So, like, the teams, man, the trainers, the coaches need to do a really good job to just get the players uh, back in game shape. I want to ask you this, you know, looking from afar, and, you know, obviously you're with the Celtics, but a team like Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Durant has been out the entire time. Can he come back this year now and affect the playoffs? Is that possible? Yeah. It's tough, man. It's definitely like it's it's very very tough because like it, because like, everybody's been out. Everybody's been yeah, out. Yeah, but yeah, but like I'm trying to think. You know, he he was been out for a long time, but like you know, game shape is different. It doesn't matter yeah. how much you run, how much you lift, or whatever you do. Game shape is you have to play the game to be in game shape. Right. So like, I mean, like you said, everybody was out, but I don't think they will take that risk. You know, I don't know. I, uh, I got to backtrack a little bit, and I got to ask you about a couple of things that happened to you. And one, there was a rumor, or, it, or did it happen, that the Turkey's, Turkish government tried to have you kidnapped? They did, actually. When I was, so I'm, I was doing like a lot of basketball camps. Uh, well, when I had my Turkish citizenship, when I had my Turkish passport, mm -hmm. I was actually doing a lot of basketball camps all over the world, not just in America. And I remember we were in, in, in uh, Indonesia and they, are, they were working with the, uh, the army there. They actually came to my hotel and they, they did try to kidnap me, but which, which was we were in a different place. And we left the country immediately. We went to Romania, right? I landed in Romania. I gave my passport to the lady. The lady checked my passport. They said, your passport has been revoked. I'm sorry. Uh, you cannot get in the country because in R Romania, we have this like big event, whatever. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Because uh, I asked my manager, he, he told me, he's like, you're not an American uh, citizen. You, know, you only have a green card, right? 
and you're still a Turkish uh, citizen, so they can deport you back to Turkey. So you better get out of there immediately. We called the Homeland, uh, we, we talked to Homeland Security, we talked to some senators, congressmen, and some, some like the big lawyers. We left the country in a heartbeat because like they could have sent us back to church. But like the, the luckily, man, I'm so proud to say this, but I'm going to become an American citizen next year. Oh, oh you have no idea but how much like, it's like, it's, it's, it's an honor and proud man because like when i become a citizen that i'm going to be able to travel where, whatever i want but like even this year like when we went to uh, canada for the christmas game i play against yes, Toronto, I remember that. we had to get in the touch with the prime minister justin trudeau's office and they have to give us like a promise and say okay whatever happens he's going to be fine because like if you are criticizing turkish government right and if you're not in turkey if you're in turkey they'll put you in jail but if you're not in turkey Turkish government using their power to abuse human rights violations so, and a red notice system, uh, Interpol. So like they put your name on Interpol, right? Whichever country you're in, they have to deport you back to Turkey. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So, so like, wait, let me hear. So you're saying I'm talking to right now, I'm looking at a, a, a terrorist right now? That's who you are? I mean, I mean so that, 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 that's what the <laughs> Turkish government is saying. That Interpol wants you. Oh, my God. I, I mean, I could get money right now if I call somebody. <laughs> So like I I remember like they did actually came out it's all over the news you can't uh, uh, check it out like uh, they actually did to tell me and a scanner is a terrorist and I actually answered them back and I say only thing I terrorize is the basketball ring wow. I mean I mean my teammates my coaches the fans know me man because like the the this stuff I'm doing the charity works the giving back to comedy all that stuff but like I, it was it's tough because they your name is on Interpol with like the one of the biggest <laughs> criminals in the world, you know? And all I'm trying to do is play basketball and talk about democracy and freedom. That is crazy. Um, but like, it, it's, it's, I mean, we laugh about it. Me and my teammates, whenever I come to locker room, they, the, the news just, whenever they put it out there like about Interpol and Paris, everything, it, it's all over the American news and, and uh, you know, Turkish news. I come in the locker room, we look at it, we laugh about it, and we don't let that uh, distract us. The thing that, you know, that, that I love watching you play again, and it's over the years, but your, your cities you've played in and, and, and places you've been, you know, did you, are they any different than Boston, Utah, New York, or are, are they a lot more different than Boston from a stand, a fan standpoint? I mean, the fan standpoint, like, Boston fans probably one of the closest ones to a college fan, like the European fans. They are crazy. They go out. They're wilding. They they always like cheer for you. It doesn't matter. You're up twenty, you're down twenty. They're always there for you. But like you go to some of the cities. I'm mean, like you know, like you go to some of the cities. Like you start losing, the so people start to not show up for the games. But it's not <laughs> like that in Boston. It's always packed. TD Garden is always packed and always you know sold out. But uh. You know, the difference is probably, you know, like the, probably when you like, when you come into Boston, you look at, you look up, you see all the banners, you see all like the, the jerseys retired. Like, so it, it gives you like chills and it gives you like a lot of responsibility because like, you, you walk in the locker room, you think about like, okay, Larry Bird played for the team. You know, you, Robert Parrish or Bill Russell, this and that played for Kevin McHill played for the team. So like, you cannot, you cannot have a bad night. And just because it's, a, it's Massachusetts, right? You look every team out there play for a championship. Us, Bruins, Patriots, you know, the Red Sox, this. So, like, you cannot, they always expect us to, uh, to be, like, the top of the league. So, like, you, you cannot have a bad day, man. You cannot have a bad game. You know, being home as much as you've had during this pandemic, and one thing people have done, and I know you've watched professional wrestling, did you happen to watch anything with The Last Dance? I did watch The Last Dance, yeah. And, and talk to me it. about what you felt, and because you, you watched the game. That was bumping oh, ground, yeah. kind of like your game, a Dennis Rodman type, you yeah. know, in the paint being tough. Right. I mean, like, I had a chance to meet with Michael Jordan when I was, like, what, 16, 17 years old. But, like, you talk, you talk about Last Dance, you talk about Goosebumps, you know. It's just, it's just crazy how they did it. I think that the, the one scene that just got me, okay, he's the GOAT, 
is the last shot against when he stole the ball from Carmel. And Carmel is actually my really good friend, like really good friend. Like we went to fishing together. I went to his house. He, so he's, him, he's still mad about that. They're talking about oh, for sure. He is, he for is sure. like, it's bullshit. I, I know. I, I'm not talking about it. He <laughs> said, I'm a bad man myself. He's, he exactly. has a lot of anger about this thing. I mean, you stole the ball, take that last shot. And I'm like, you know what? I feel like that is that shot has ended the goat debate. And about you see, like they were just like a crazy team, man. Like you, I mean, Dennis Rodman. I I know Dennis Rodman was crazy, but I don't know he was this wild. Like going to a wrestling match during like the playoffs, whatever, and talking about like the girls and this and that. I'm like, this is just going to Vegas. I'm like, this is crazy, you know. But it just I feel like they put the this documentary out there in the best time because everybody was dying to watch sports. And now you all you have to do is just lay back and just uh, watch that documentary. It, it was amazing, man. I loved it. All right. And lastly, I'm going to ask you one last question. I do appreciate your time. Can you give me your Mount Rushmore of sports? You get four people you can pick. And I don't care, you can go with soccer, you can go with basketball, okay. I don't care where it's at. But give me, if you were building a mountain brush more behind your house, you had those four people to put up there, who would you put up there? The, any my four favorite any, of all time. Any anybody, it, because, yeah, because it doesn't have the, and I love Ooh. your perspective because I'm gonna get it from a European's perspective also. And I got right, something right, right. from a guy and we were talking about it and he was from Europe and he talked about, uh, uh, Michael Schumacher saying, you know, the, the great auto drive. Then there was a, yeah, then he yeah, told yeah. me about a guy, um, Bota, I think, who was a great cricket player. So it uh -huh. was, it was a, a different perspective than from just an American. Right. So you give me your four, you might think about it. Whew. I got to go with Muhammad Ali first, you know? Okay. Muhammad Ali is definitely my favorite of all time, man, in any sports. I will say him first. Um, Jordan, I'll put Jordan up there. All right, two. I put Jordan up there. You know, after listening to David Ortiz, I might put him up there too. Wow. You know, I'll, 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 yeah, I, I, David Ortiz. And uh, man, I'm trying to go with it. Football or, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan. So I got to yeah, put well, the rock. Right. I got to, I got to, I got to put either, I'm trying to think who should I put up there. Are you going to go with the nature boy? I'm thinking. I'm, <laughs> I like Undertaker, but what The Rock did for wrestling, oh. I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm put The Rock out there. Yep. Okay. Well, you know, dude, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, stay safe. No, I hope yep. you don't have to go be back. I'm so happy you're going to be an American citizen. So take it easy, and I'll be glad when I'm able to see you again. Actually, take off a mask and give you a good pound. So uh, <laughs> I hope we'll so soon. Back together. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it.